I'm just a curious kid from like the suburbs of Detroit where uh, I always liked playing around with stuff and and playing with little machines and figuring out how stuff works. When I was younger, it was uh, and still to this day, a lot of music and, you know, looking at a piano and going like, how how does this thing make its music um, into doing things like magic tricks? And uh, I learned, you know, like yo-yos and juggling and all that stuff. Anytime I saw something, I, I wanted to figure out how it was done. Uh, I, I either sat there, tried to figure it out, or I got a book or I started, you know, once the internet came out, that changed everything. I could go learn all this stuff. So um, I like to think of my life as just a curious, like most people, just curious about how stuff works and going and playing with it. So, uh, you know, Cinema 40 is just another thing on that path, uh, it, along with photography, along with uh, making, making coffee, you know, like uh, it's just a a curious life, I hope. And uh, the most important part of it is that when I figure stuff out, um, I like to share it with everyone else. Um, because there's not a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to learn things. But there's a lot of confusing and technical ways to learn things. And often, in many, um, in in many uh, things that you go, you go try to learn, you're going to find an expert that's going to teach you how to do it. And often experts are the least qualified to teach beginners how to make something. Often it's just somebody that's just above a beginner or just above where you are that is that that is easier to be a teacher because they're empathetic. They know where you're coming from. They remember being a beginner. An expert it, it can all, often talk, talk over your head or often assume things that you already know that you don't know. So um, I like to approach things in that way teach from any level and just share my 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 learning with with everybody as much as possible so you mentioned that you have actually a couple of heroes or artists that you look up to in some sort can you name a couple off the top of my head mk12 is what got me into this whole thing uh they just happen to have an animation on this uh burly bear network that was uh here in the states and um they played this man of action uh, President America animation, and I thought it was the coolest thing. At the end of it, it said, made with After Effects, made by MK12, made by After, made with After Effects. And I go, well, all right, what the heck's this After Effects thing? And, and so I looked at it, and I was like, holy crap. It's right when the 3D After Effects started coming out. Before that, After Effects was just 2D flat planes or whatever. Then this is when 3D cameras and animation came out for cinema or for after effects and that was it like i obsessed over after effects for the next um six seven years of my life uh and that's when everyone started yelling at me to to do real 3d and uh you know trying out other stuff there are just certain people i've met over the over my life that I've worked with directly that might not have a website everyone knows about, uh, but that have taught me so many things just to be around them. Um, things like um, Anthony from Digital Kitchen, being around him, Noah from Digital Kitchen when I worked with him, uh, guys like Jack who works out here, and Aaron Becker, um, just just you know friends of mine basically, but they've been there uh, to yell at me and to tell me to get better and to show me what, uh, how to get better. And those artists, um, uh, I'll trade in all, all of the website names, uh, for meeting two or three of those people in my life that were there to show me why my stuff was ugly and be able to not just say it's ugly, but teach me why it was. How do you progress as an artist who only works in tutorials on the eye candy stuff? If that makes sense. I I look at what I see and I try to emulate it and figure it out for me. Uh, I am not actually interested in the art behind stuff. I don't. The conceptual stuff is very. I'm very shallow with con conceptual thinking, art thinking, uh, the meaning behind it all. Uh, I I don't. Uh, I wish I was better at it. Actually, I wish I was had that mind. But I just simply don't. I'm very shallow in, in the way that I think about those things. So when I teach uh, some eye candy, like design, I I didn't learn design because I like design. Design was never interesting to me. Uh, I learned design because my stuff was so ugly 
And that was the only way for it not to be ugly was to learn the, the, the techniques. So I looked at design like a magic trick. What is the trick here? What are we doing? How can I apply these design principles to my work um, and know what works and what doesn't? So an early thing for me was like black and white. Okay, be, become monochrome. Monochrome images, you don't have to worry about color theory. You don't have to worry about a lot of color issues if you just use a monochrome palette. Okay, typeface. There's a million typefaces. Friends of mine would obsess over all these different ones and new ones would come out and they would go crazy and I couldn't care. Like, but I learned, I like the looks of these four typefaces. I'm gonna study how to use these and use only these. And that's my trick. Um, things like, uh, you know, all the all the optical stuff, the lens flare, the film grain, the glows, uh, the um, the like making a dirty looking lens by putting like grime on top of it. All those things are are tricks to me. Uh, they're they're con they're not conceptual. They you know if they fit the theme. In other words, they should fit the theme. You should shouldn't put like a dirty lens on top of like a cartoon image, uh, but. You need to, for me, I needed to have the bag of tricks or my stuff would always be ugly. Um, as as good as I could figure out how to animate, as as well as I can move a camera around in After Effects, I realized that all my stuff was so, uh, was gonna remain ugly unless I learned design principles. So I learned the ones that mattered the most to me. I learned the ones the 80 the 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 20 of the of the techniques that made 80 percent of the difference and i leave the artistic conceptual stuff up to other people is there any technological advancement that you look forward to i think all this real time rendering stuff is going to going to make everything real crazy here pretty soon um i am looking at you know things like octane and and all these renders and the stuff like beeple's pulling off with these with these octane renders uh, a couple of my friends have been playing with it and the render times are bonkers fast what I think Octane is going to do, or what I think real-time rendering, however it pops up into the future, will do is allow us to iterate faster and say, nope, 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 yes. In the same way we do in the real world, we could turn up a light and go, done, that's the light. And go to the rim light and go, turn it up, done, that's what I want. Instead of turning it up a little, waiting for a render, turn it up a little more, wait for a render. Those little micro, even seconds, will make the the look and the art and the and the final product look that much better because iteration is what makes it look better. At least what I, at least how I work, I tweak the knobs until they look right. Um, it's rarely a calculation for me. So I think that's the promise of real time rendering is just just way just beautiful work. Uh, I'm excited to see where that goes. If if there's anything in the near future, real time rendering. If you had to give us three golden tips, what would they be? Uh, I would say always make it a goal to uh, always make it a goal to grow and to be around people that are better than you. Uh, man, every time in my life I've been flatlining or I've done the same thing over and over again for a year, it's because I've learned all I could from the people directly around me and I needed another place to grow and I needed a, another goal to accomplish. Um, uh, so that would be one. The, the, the thing that goes along with that, so I guess number two, is to always look at successful people as a place to learn and not as a place to uh, be jealous of or as a place to put you down. A lot of people look at success and or things they want to do or or work they, they want to make one day and it, and it makes them sad that they didn't make it and it makes them sad that they can't make it. Um, and it should always be, it should always be from a, an inspiration, either from the person or from the work. So if you look at work and say, uh, I want to be able to make that one day, how do I do that? That's great. If you look at work and you're like, I'll never be able to make that one day, then you never will, then you're done. Uh, so always come at it from a place of of positivity, look at stuff you like and and drive towards it. Same with people. You don't have to like everything everyone does. There's always somebody uh, you can look up to and say, ah, that's that's great, but he's a uh, he's whatever. He's a uh, I don't like his haircut. I, he's a jerk or whatever. But find the things, find the things that you are, find the things in successful people that you do want to emulate and emulate those things. You don't have to do it all. This goes with books. 
uh, I guess that'll be my third thing. Read a lot of books uh, about things that you're interested in. Um, and even just slightly interested in. Read them through and take the advice that you ag agree with and basically, frankly, ignore the advice that doesn't resonate with you. Uh, if your body or your, your state or your part in life or your place in life does not allow you to look at something and, and agree with it wholeheartedly, then just take a break from that right now. You don't have to agree with everything. Um, you can look at a, a book, like a controversial book or something and say, oh, okay, I, I, I can pull these two, three things out of it. I could ignore the rest and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So I guess that would be the, the, the final one. Read, a, uh, uh, I guess there's four now, but <laughs> there's books, learn from the best, uh, do, don't, don't be saddened by great people, be, uh, inspired by great people. And, um, uh, oh, the last one was not everything is for you. Take what matters to you and don't, don't yell or disagree or get angry about what doesn't agree with you, but take the good parts and just leave the rest on the floor. That would be, uh, that'd be my Leave leave the rest on the floor. That maybe there, there's a book title in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on, and uh, I'm gonna export this right now. So, uh, oh, bye everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Bye guys. Thanks again. <laughs>